Hey everyone, RJ here with CV Tech and today I'll be unboxing the Moto E5 Go Edition. So let's get it unboxed. Okay everyone, so this is the Moto E5 Go Edition. I've actually had several requests to do this phone unboxing and review. So I went and picked it up and we're gonna see how it is. Now this phone is going for a really good price. You can see here, 39.88 is what I picked this one here up for. And with the Moto E5 Play, it's been out for a little while now, kind of makes me wonder why they make an E5 Go Edition. Now looking at the specs here, they seem pretty similar, but we're gonna dive into the phone a little bit and just see if there is any differences between the Moto E5 Play and the Moto E5 Go. So looking here at the bottom of the, bottom of the box, You'll see it has a 5.2 inch HD display, an eight megapixel rear camera with a five megapixel front facing camera. It is a world device. Open the flap up here and you will see there of course is the phone and going to the back here, you see the phone color is black. You got expendable memory up to 128 gigabytes. This has a 1.4 gigahertz processor, a 2800 million fire removable battery and the operating system is Android Go edition. Let's go ahead, rip that off. And here's the basic presentation. Okay, let's go ahead and pull off the top of this here. It has the phone, it just kind of pops right out. And here you do get a Moto charger. I doubt it's anything fast charging at all. It does have micro USB, so no type C charging here. And you got a little booklet here with a removable battery, which is really becoming extinct, okay? It's hard to find a phone anymore. It's got a battery that can be removed, which would be nice because you know, batteries don't last forever. And then here you get a bunch of booklets, material, who cares? Let's go ahead, put all this away, and uh, we'll look at this phone. Okay, so the phone is now in hand. I'm gonna read you some of the specs here that's on this front protector. Of course, the same eight megapixel rear camera with autofocus, five megapixel front camera with a flash, which is always really nice. Has all day battery, water repellent coating, and expendable storage, and runs on Android Oreo Go Edition. Now look at the front of the phone here. There's your receiver, camera, and your front flash. On the bottom, it's just a Motorola Brandon. On the left side, we have nothing at all. On the top, we got a 3.5 millimeter headset jack with a microphone on the bottom we have the micro usb charging port with microphone and on the right here we got a nice texture power button as well as your volume rocker on the back is your camera flash and your motorola icon right there now the battery's done been installed but i'll go ahead and show you where everything is here under the back cover of this phone so with the battery in place, you will see up top here is your micro SD card slot and of course an included nano SIM card. So this takes a nano SIM in this device. So we'll go ahead and just snap this back on and we'll go ahead and power the phone on while I remove this plastic down here at the bottom. And right there we go, Motorola powered by Android. So HD display, 1.4 quad core processor, 16 gigabytes of storage. So basically from, from what I'm seeing right now, the specs looks to be the same as the E5 Play, but the RAM, cause on the E5 Play, we have two gigabytes of RAM and the Go Edition phones, the max I've seen is one gig. So I'll get this phone here all set up and I'll come back when it's finished. So we're all set up now and ready to go. Powering the phone on, you'll see a really nice vibrant display here. It is 720 by 1280 resolution. And honestly, look at the brightness here. It's down pretty low and the screen is still very bright. Motorola does a really good job with making their screens very bright and easy to see and really clear for a 720p display. Now this is basically just a stock Android experience here. I mean, nothing much on the phone at all. Just some Verizon stuff there, of course, that you get on a lot of these prepaid carrier lock phones. Now I've been looking at some specs here and it does have the 1.4 gigahertz quad core 425 processor which was the same processor that was in the Moto E5 Play. However, it don't show the RAM anywhere, but I know the Android Go Edition phones have a max of one gigabyte of RAM. So this phone costs 40 bucks and you can buy the regular E5 Play, which is the exact same phone pretty much, for like 20 bucks more. So do you want to save 20 bucks and get the Go Edition or just spend 20 bucks extra and get the actual regular version of Android with more RAM? 
it's going to run a whole lot better, of course, as you know, because one gigabyte of RAM, yeah, it don't cut it in Android phones, as y'all know, but performance and speed is not the purpose of a Go Edition phone, which I've mentioned that over and over again. They're just for very light apps, they're for very light usage, talking text, taking pictures, social media, or light social media, YouTube, stuff like that. So anyway, this also has XLTE ready. So yeah, got that going for it, I reckon. Has Wi-Fi calling and all that kind of stuff. Dual band Wi-Fi, 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi. So there you go there. So looking around the phone here, uh, like I said, basic Android. Pull the drop down shade here and you'll see some stuff here like your Verizon, uh, your data saver, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, airplane mode, your flashlight, all this stuff there, portrait mode only. You can edit those as well and add location hotspot, cast, uh, serve, storage, files go, all that kind of stuff there. So whatever you want to choose it to. Go into the settings here for a moment to see what we have going on in here. Basic stuff, network and internet connected devices, as notifications, battery, display. So here in display, you got brightness level, you got adaptive brightness, wallpaper, sleep, advanced. You're just your typical stuff here you see in all Android phones that are basically stock. Got your storage here with 12.39 gigabytes free out of 16. So 3.61 gigabytes has been used out of the box. So not too bad. You can add an SD card, you know, for all your pictures, videos, music, and stuff like that. I'm scrolling on down here to system and down here to about phone. You'll see this phone does run Android 8.1.0 with November 1st, 2018 security patch. So like I said, this is just, just your basic phone, okay? Gestures is just your jump to camera. You know, no, no fancy gesture, nothing like that. But that's about it. It's just your very, very stock experience here on Android. And of course, going into the camera here, uh, you will see that I believe that it is the same as the E5 Play with the 8 megapixel in the rear and the 5 in the front. You do got a professional mode there, as you've already seen. So photo modes there, panorama, slow motion, and you can actually go live on YouTube directly from the camera app, which is pretty awesome. Go into the camera settings. Here's your flash, self-timer, this button up here for auto or manual mode, and your settings are up here. So you got an eight megapixel camera or six megapixel, whatever you choose, 16 by nine or four by eight. You can record in full 1080, 30 frames per second, 720 or 480 at 30 frames per second. You can tap anywhere to capture, quick capture, shutter sound, and that's about it. Now going into the video mode here, get your flash up there as well as your settings and the same stuff that you've seen in the photo settings, the same thing there. Now flipping around to the front facing camera, you do got a front flash, which is really nice to see on phones. I like the front flash. It's just really awesome. So there's your flash button, your settings here as well. Now it is a five megapixel or 3.8 megapixel, four by three or 16 by nine. Record in full 10, 80, 30 frames per second, 720 and 480 at 30 frames there as well. Selfie, photo mirror, same thing as you've seen previously. So yeah, there you go. Pretty much it's your basic camera settings there on a phone okay so just pretty basic stuff now going to the dollar here you will see just a regular dollar and as you're seeing how long it's taking to pull this dollar up i mean look at that look how long that took to pull up the dollar so that's the problem you run into with these android go edition phones they're just not powerful they just don't have there you go i pushed that button forever ago and where is it there it is finally pops up that's the problem I have with these Android Go Edition phones is just, they're just slow. You can't game on these phones. You really can't do anything on these phones, um, except for like basic usage. And even then, it's just kind of sluggish. As you've seen, just pulling up the dollar took how long? So don't expect blazing fast performance out of this phone. Now, like I said, the processor is the same. The internal storage is the same as the E5 Play. The cameras are the same. The build is the same. Has a removable battery. And it's 40 bucks, so it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg for this phone here on Verizon. The camera seemed to be pretty good quality if it's the same, you know, as the E5 Play had pretty decent, you know, camera quality for the price. But just don't expect any kind of blazing fast speeds out of this Go Edition phone because that's not what these phones are made for. They're made for just a casual light user. And so there you go. The Moto E5 Go. 
I personally would spend 20 bucks extra and go with just a regular E5 Play. But if you want to save some money and you use your phone very, very light, then you can buy the E5 Go for around 40 bucks at Walmart and other places are selling it for around that price as well. So this was just my unboxing and first thoughts here of the E5 Go. I don't try to talk down about these phones because I know that the Android Go editions are basically made just for basic usage. They're not really made for anything, you know, strenuous and power use, nothing like that. But I honestly just don't see the, the, the need for these Android Go Edition phones, um, especially when the price point is really not much cheaper than the actual version of the phone. So that's just my thoughts. Uh, if this was helpful and informative, hit that like button. Any questions you may have, leave it below. Consider subscribing, hit that bell for notifications. I would appreciate it. Y'all have a good one, and thanks for watching.